John, a very good morning to you. I thought your tweet uh, reflecting on his humor and irreverence and an, at an, in an age when even that was seen to be rebellious. You called him a friend, a mentor, and a legend. He was all of those things, was he not? He certainly was, Bond. It was lovely talking to you. And, um, you know, it's just, I, I always remember when I sat in, in your seat some years ago, that it all started with John Burks and, and that, that when I sat there, the responsibility of sitting on the shoulder of a, of a giant and it all started with Berksy. And I'm sure that's something that motivates you as, as well. It's a, it's a privileged <laughs> position. He's a legend. Don't I know it, John? Don't I know it? Believe me. One of the things I think is absolutely extraordinary is, of course, he'd hosted the show before 702 became uh, a talk station, but he was able to shift and make that change really almost Almost without effort. Yeah, it's very strange. I mean, 702 was a was a music station, rock and roll station when when I joined as a as a sports reporter, and and yet uh, a man who's never got. Uh, the credit he deserves was Chris Gibbons for running the newsroom because it was the only independent uh, news station. And that gave 702, I think, a credibility that maybe other stations didn't have. But we had that dreadful signal. Uh, Radio 5 started, and, and suddenly we were losing listenership. And almost overnight, I think Rena Broomberg and Stan Katz, uh, uh, the legend has it over a bottle of whiskey, decided to become a, a talk station. And, of course, Berksy was in the spotlight. As I understand it, John, in fact, it was Berksy who gave you your first break in radio. <laughs> yeah, at, at that time, uh, Ber- Berksy always found reasons to go to America. And, uh, of course, he, he loved America. And he loved, I heard, you know, that, that uh, you reading out that, that message about uh, uh, Tony Bennett and the States and all that. And he'd always find reasons, of course, to go and do research. And he came back and said, one of the things they do is get sports stars to do guest reports. And somebody said, well, who could do it? And he said, well, I've heard this young Robbie doing, I was injured in my rugby career and I did some commentary for the SABC with Alan Wilkins. And he said, how about Robbie? Uh, and that's, that's where it all started. And uh, yes, I did. I used to share with David Williams the, the morning sport, um, three hours on the radio. The princely sum of 28 rands was what we got for that uh, particular shift. And he used to drive me mad because he, uh, Kevin Kelly and himself, his engineer, used to play the theme music when they saw me coming from the, the newsroom, they'd play it early. And of course, it, I didn't cotton on and used to, oh, even, even thinking of it now makes me laugh once. Oh, gosh, uh, reflections. Uh, thank you so much, John Robbie, former 702 broadcaster, the host of 702 Breakfast uh, for so many years. And of course, um, as uh, I suppose as where these things go, it was John Robbie who helped John Perlman get his first break on radio, certainly paid that moment uh, forward. Jenny Chris Williams, uh, author, veteran broadcaster, also remembers John Burke's No Doubt with uh, some fondness. Uh, Jenny, gosh, we should stop meeting like this. <laughs> No, I wanted to go on and on and on because I've got a crush on you. <laughs> Tell me your reflections of John Burks. You know, <laughs> there's, a, there's a very common theme that is running through everything. That amazing voice of his. I mean, you, and that, of course, comes straight from America and camel cigarettes and, and whatever. I'm not saying that John smoked. But, but that, that deep, you know, reassuring yeah. voice. Yeah. And he did transition easily. But John is absolutely, John Robbie is absolutely correct. He came back from America and there was, everybody was talking. And I think that John Burks was in that wonderful sweet spot. It was a confluence of all sorts of things. First of all, he came back and he was enamored with it. And he knew he could do it because he was talking already with his music. He, he just knew he could do it. First, uh, second, the country was in ferment. And, uh, you know, we were reaching the height of apartheid. And there was, no, there was nowhere where people could express themselves other than in print. And, of course, radio is there. It's, it's right up in, in the firing line. And, um, and Izzy Kirsch, and nobody's given him enough credit, I don't think, for actually saying to Berksy, all right, let's try it, let's do it. Because he did have that terrible signal, and uh, that AM signal, and um, which was difficult for people with music. You know, it was difficult for us to compete. So when he came back, and suddenly this thing started, and John Robbie was there. John, actually, I, I remember listening to uh, John Robbie and thinking, I've got to have some of this. I have to, and uh, going to Rena Bloomberg, and uh, and therefore to Stan Katz. And I had worked with. 
uh, John Burke's before, but I was in print at that particular uh, case. And I mean, I, I, I was just enamored of the world. And so with Berksy, and he enabled everybody to just laugh. The, the power of laughter and the power of communication in a time of social unrest, where nobody knew what was going to happen next, where people were hoarding this and hoarding that and emigrating, and it, it, it was a very uncertain time. And he straddled that time. And I just think talk radio came at exactly the right time yeah. with exactly the right people. It was, it was the sweet spot. Absolutely. Jenny Chris Williams, appreciate your reflections. And of course, you mentioned Stan Katz, uh, one of the founders of Prime Media, uh, former CEO of Prime Media Broadcasting, joins us now on the line. Stan, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. Did you really start the talk format on 702 over a bottle of whiskey? Um, actually, John was included as well. It was me, Rena, and John, and a bottle of JMB. My goodness. And, uh, <laughs> so credit must go to the distillers as well, you know. <laughs> but of course, as I said earlier, he really took to the format like one unto the manner born. Absolutely. And the reason is John was a storyteller and nobody could tell a story better than John. So um, it was it was a natural transition. I think everybody remembers John for his prank calls. In fact, he played a couple of snippets uh, earlier. Um, and I think as John Robbie mentioned, uh, it was water cooler talk with John. Did you hear what John said this morning? Yeah. But he was also, he was dangerous. Uh, at one point, we had to put Gary Edwards with him to kind of keep him on the straight and narrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jenny remarked uh, about his, his stunning voice. John was the best. John was the king. There was no one better. But he couldn't take direction. So even with that magnificent voice, he could have been earning himself a king ransom doing voiceovers for commercials. Um, he couldn't take direction. So, and then my relationship with John uh, was, I suppose, I don't think the word complex is quite right, but it varied over the years. It started off with uh, on Swazi Radio, where John was my boss. Then on 702, we were colleagues, and then my um Career took a different trajectory. I got into management and ended up running the station. And then, and John, I was John's boss. Um, and in 1987, uh, I was doing the morning show. John had taken one of numerous sabbaticals. That was the thing with John. He would burn out. He would put so much into his his show that he would frequently burn out. He's also um, noted for his frequent retirements. I think John retired <laughs> <laughs> three times. Yeah. And then he would make this triumphant comeback and it'd be welcomed by his adoring fans. But uh, he was the king. He was the king, was he not? He was the king. Stan Katz, I appreciate your reflections. Thank you so much for joining us. One of the founders uh, uh, of uh, Prime Media, as he said, over that bottle of whiskey. And here we are. Uh, he did this, of course, uh, during a very tumultuous time for South Africa as we were transitioning out of the apartheid system, as uh, the townships were really ablaze, people being murdered on trains, but somehow helped carry uh, the the audience held its hand through those difficult times and he will remain forever a legend of broadcasting in South Africa and certainly has a place in this building. Rest in peace, John Burks. Current events, developing stories, tough questions, your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.